we will open the meeting at 6.02 p.m. on Thursday, February 8th. This is a hybrid meeting. Denise is remote. Oh, so we got there. All right. Shelly's remote and in person. Wow, she's talented. Very talented. Um, all right. Uh, can I have a review of approval of minutes of January 16, 2024? If there are any comments, I'll make a motion to approve the January 2024 minutes. Okay. All second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. We are on to financial statements. Shelly sent those for review ahead of time. I did. I, I don't have any comments on the reports themselves unless you do. There hasn't been a whole lot of changes. So I will just note the warrants signed electronically since last meeting were uh, 13, totaling $82,144.26. Okay. I have no questions. All right. Okay, good. And, uh, if we just got some warrants today, it's not an idea. So people will sign those also when you can. You got it today. I was going to say, I don't feel like I got it today. At 8 o'clock this morning. Um, principal's report with Kristen sent us like on Sunday. Kristen was working on Sunday. <laughs> Well, I'm just trying to show us how hard she works by oh, sending that to us. I accidentally sent Sunday. an email at like 2.04 a.m. not thinking on the staff. Like, why don't we get an email at 2.04 a.m.? You know, when it pops in your head, you have to have it. You know? I guess. So um, I updated the school improvement thing. I usually do that about January and February just to tell in terms of progress. Also, I was hoping for this meeting, but we have some students who are absent. We seem to have that stomach bug going on. Oh, yeah. Don't touch it. Um, so we have to do some makeups. But the sort of just the not deep analyzing, but the uh, you know overview of our NEWA scores are looking really, really good, um, oh, which is good. very exciting. And I'll have the data for you at the next meeting. Um, we're starting to see, you know, interestingly, the social emotional is back to sort of where we were five years ago, you know, just in wow. terms of how many students and the kinds of social emotional um, concerns that students have. Many more students with anxiety than I've ever seen. Um, but That's we're seeing in districts. Some, yeah, we're seeing in some of our fifth and sixth graders um, those COVID years. Although we brought the kids back pretty pretty quickly, those COVID years have um, caused some holes like deep down in the reading or deep down in the math that we're analyzing and trying to go back to fill those. Um, you know, we have the summer program every summer, thank you. And typically the sixth graders have the frontier program two weeks, but we, we're probably gonna call a few sixth graders back too, just to get some of that um, and the other weeks to get some of that under their belt because we want them to head on um, with some but still, so mm -hmm. it's great. We were able to find them and we're hopping, sort of hopping right on them. That test gets that specific that you can find That test like doesn't that? get that specific. It does get um, specific for standards, but the Dibbles and some of the other assessments, the maths, the math survey, that gets really deep. Um, so it's really, really great. You can literally say, okay, this student missed um, constant vowel consonant. Easy, you know. The new model is tutoring. Not necessarily half hour small group, but 15 minutes of tutoring. Our interventionist Brenna, as well as several other staff members. That's sort of the model that we're moving toward because, or or 30 minutes one to one, or whatever we can do, because we're finding that this the the polls are so so specific mm -hmm. that you could probably fill those in about three or four weeks and move on to the next meeting. Mm -hmm. We're doing more of that, which has been really rewarding and rewarding. We're seeing progress. We're doing a lot more with buddy classes, which I'm thrilled about. We're um, you know older and younger, um, and that's where the older kids shine, and that's where the younger kids really look up to the older kids. So we're loving that. Um, we. I'm just trying to pull some highlights. Um, 
we have our anti um, our anti racism diversity equity and inclusion committee up and rolling this month. We're doing February March. We have star matrix for core one tier one behavior, and so we're on R and we're doing uh, no we're on A and we're doing acceptance and so. We're trying to bring it to life for the students. So we're doing um, uh, a great deal on, you know, taking pictures when we see acceptance is a little tricky, but we talked to the kids about what that would look like. The students are going get, to be getting a bingo card on Friday and they're going to fill it with ways, ways that we hear acceptance, what it looks like, what it, what it sounds like, what it feels like. And then we come back from break, so we'll put one and the kids get to fill out their bingo boards, a little prize for a little mm -hmm. prize for everyone. Yeah. We're hoping to really get that acceptance piece in. Kindness is easy to show and demonstrate, but acceptance is something completely different. That's true. Um, you know, I had to, we had a we had to start the we started a math day. We had math day not that long ago. And so the students are sitting in the gym. We start with the whole school together. And I'm looking at these kiddos and I'm like, just about in tears and i said they were like so silent and so respectful and i said you know what i love so many things about you but you know what i love about you i said you can come in we can have a little fun and then you can go out and you can do some hard work in math and then we can come back to the end of the day and we can have fun and because they're really just marvelous we've got such an engaging audience it's an engaged audience it's really great awesome. we have great great students and great families and staff um so coming up, we have Read Across America coming up. We have we've always had our um our uh, not uh, I'm, I don't, I'm having word loss. Read word retrievals, not routines, but traditions. Mm -hmm. And we're adding more and more. Like math day, we added a couple years ago. Read Across America has been a big one. We're changing that up a little bit. We had a Steam Day last month, which was great. Um, we have uh, Poetry Day coming up. The students love these days. Mm -hmm. They really love. They really look forward to it, and they really love it, and they get a lot out of it. Also, the recorder is great to us. The recorder comes to everything and anything that we invite them oh, to. Cool. Um, it helps that one of the one of the recorders I had in school. <laughs> <laughs> so that yeah. he, he would come to anything anyone asked him to. That's so awesome. I don't know if anyone has any questions. That was a quick preview. We're having a lot of fun and working hard up here. <laughs> I was looking at this teacher's um, <clears throat> teacher self care kind of stuff. Yeah, which That's, is been great. So, yeah, they they look like a very tired staff right now. We try to get a um, you know starting new curriculum. And many of the teachers are start, are doing two new curriculums by choice. The math was an option, but by choice they wanted to get a head start. And um, looking tired, you know, when they talk about getting rid of February break and April break. And turning it into a one March break, you guys see everyone right now because that February break's perfect. But it's come, it's going a little more smoothly that they've had a couple months under their belt with the new EL program. Mm -hmm. I was able to over the past two weeks go to kindergarten one day, first grade the next day, second grade, doing observations of EL. <clears throat> And it is absolutely amazing how it threads from kindergarten right on through sixth grade. Mm -hmm. Same language, same concepts, higher level, going deeper. It's really just amazing. And and the teachers are very um, they have to put a lot of work into it. Mm -hmm. But they're um it's just going well along so nicely. Mm -hmm. Um and then we're doing the you fly in the lower grades. Mm -hmm. Um so and some of the people, some of the districts are, you know, we're in where I work, eleven school districts, and they're uh, <clears throat> engaging us on teacher education and self care, and also offering therapy to teachers during the school day. Yeah. Um. So they don't have to travel after school. That's great. But can use, you know, like lunch or time, you know, a block to be able to do it during the school day because they realize that so many teachers are tired of leaving the field after teaching through COVID that they feel like it's an investment in it. We have a student so. wellness committee, but we have a staff wellness committee. We've been able to secure a wellness grant for the past several years. So oh, we just awesome. we're just wrapping up a session of yoga. Mm -hmm. We have um we had coming someone come in from Blue Cross Blue Shield to do something on strength training. 
And then Mr. Williams is going to do a few weeks with the staff after school on strength training. Training. So we tend to have something going on all the time. We had cooking yeah. classes oh, last year, um, but we're <coughs> sort of upping that too. Right. I was just thinking about talked about the students having fun transitioning to like really learning yeah. and coming back. It's just a tribute to you and all the teachers and staff and all the adults, cafeteria, everything, everybody that works in this building creates that community where kids can thrive. Thank so you. thank you to all of thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We've had a couple of visitors who are looking at schools and things like that. And they're like, it's a really peaceful school. Yeah. I'm like, it's such a sweet, peaceful yeah. school mm -hmm. all the time. We have we have our issues, don't get me wrong. I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not denying that, but mm -hmm. it's just a really sweet, peaceful school. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Michael. Yeah. I just met a new couple that I don't know how long they've been in town, but they don't have kids yet. I said, well, if you're having kids, this is a place to live yeah. because the grammar school is so great. And I'm like, oh, they didn't really know that yet. <clears throat> and I was like, yeah, it's really awesome. And I agree. It's just, I said, I'm a little biased. But <laughs> yes. oh. Anything else for Kristen? <laughs> All righty. And um, our talent show is coming up. It's the last Friday in March. If you want a real treat, Come to that talent show. Uh, it's my favorite night of the year. It's really, really amazing. Um, and I think one of the reasons it's my favorite type night of the year is that these kids get up on stage, they, you know, and oh, the new car shy students get up, mm -hmm. outgoing students get up. And the, it's just, it's my favorite night of the school year. It's just wonderful. What time is it? Last year. Six o'clock. What did you say? I said I remember last year very much. It was so wonderful, wasn't it? <laughs> so March 29th. Yeah. Yeah. Six o'clock. Awesome. My kids still have videos of that, the talent show. And we love to watch it. It's so fun. Yeah, yeah. All righty. Anything else for Kristen? Thank you, Kristen. And we are on to public comment. I don't think we have anybody that needs to comment or wants to comment. Just observers. Okay. Um, unfinished business. We have to vote policies. Yep, you do. <laughs> uh, look at me, I don't vote. You know. All right. We are going to vote on. E-E-A-E-C, E-E-A-G, G-B, I, G-C-A, G-C-K, G-B, G-D-B, H-B-J-F, J-F-B-B, J-F-B-B, dash one. I make a motion to vote on all those policies you just read. All right. Can I have a second? I will second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. Excellent. And then we're going to vote to remove. C L F B B G A G C C D G D Q D G C Q E. This is an eye test. G D Q C H J B A J H B B A J H C and J K A. Those are voting to remove those. I'll make a motion to remove those. Oh. Second. All second. All in favor? Aye. Excellent. And now we're on to the budget. Yes. I printed paper copies in case anyone wants those to follow along. If you don't want them, I will take a piece of them. Well, there's nothing new here. Everything that you're seeing tonight, we already talked about last month. Uh, we implemented the recommendations that we reviewed. So I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. Stop me along the way, but this is a pretty straight forward, simple budget. But we also know more about the money we're getting from the state, right? Don't we? Um, Since our last meeting? Sort of. No. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll get to explain. She's the garbage bucket. Yeah, you can talk about that. Um, okay. okay. All right. Uh, so we're going to review what we talked about last month. Level service budget came in at 5.6%. Uh, and you can see there what the composition of that is, wage increases, non-wage increases, and then an adjustment for the ESSER grant. Uh, we do still have some ESSER money available that we're going to apply to this uh, FY25 budget, but I always, as a starting point, 
throw back in anything that is on a short-term grant just in case we don't have those funds any longer. A um, couple of big factors impacting the wage increase. One is the longevity that several staff members picked up. So that's a $20,000 increase on wages alone, which is just about 1%. Um, that'll be a three-year expense. If no one else elects that longevity benefit in three years, that'll fall off. Uh, and then central office, the cost share increase went up there. So the uh, Conway Grammar School is seeing a significant in increase in central office. COLA increases for uh, teachers and IAs is 2% plus their step. Uh, Non-wage increases were minor. I made adjustments for things such as trash, uh, our accounting software fees are up, um, supplies and materials across the board have been up in general. So just a minor increase there. And then the grant is no. New requests and initiatives were also minimal this year. And while we're listing them as new requests and initiatives, they're really basic needs within the school building. Um, consumables for the new curriculum we've accounted for, uh, principal's office supplies and materials just due to increased costs of things. And then that equity and access for field trips will allow more families that need financial support to make sure that students can attend trips and that we can provide proper transportation for trips because transportation is up. Uh, the administrative recommendations we talked about last month included uh, funding level services and the additional new requests. Uh, we have a placeholder in the budget for employee separation costs. That was done last year. Um, we sort of paid for a non-salary expense with ESSER and put the salary expense that we had last year onto the budget. So I'm recommending we pull that off because we do not have any retirements next year, we'll put it onto school choice and earmark, the, earmark those funds for future use. Uh, we have about 45,000 left of ESSER funds currently, and the recommendation is to use 30,000 of ESSER to help fund the FY25 budget. Just a note there that those funds will be gone as of next year, so we'll be looking to absorb that back in. So at 30,000, we're over 1% um, that we're automatically adding to our starting point next year. And then we do have rural aid. Conway received about 22 or 23,000 in rural aid. So we're recommending a 20,000 reduction with, with the current year rural aid funds. So that brings our budget to 2.69%. Uh, Darius, I feel like that's a pretty good number overall. And uh, that is what we would recommend that we bring to the town on, and for public hearing. Uh, so here's just a quick snapshot of what this looks like. Level services plus the new request. Plus the, minus the offsets and moving those employee separation costs to school choices where we would have that figure there. Uh, quickly, a little bit about general fund budget composition. We talked about this generically last month. These next three graphs actually show Conway's numbers dumped in there. So you can see that there's that repeat theme of instruction being three quarters of the budget. So that is any uh, teaching staff in the building, IAs, teachers, uh, special related service providers, principal's office, staff, um, anyone who falls in that 2000 function code for DESE. And then the second largest cost for Conway Grammar School is operations and maintenance. So we break that down a little bit further and look at uh, the largest chunk of the pie, which is salaries and wages, which covers about 80% of our budget. You can see there again, the majority of those funds go directly to those the staff that is involved with teaching and learning. Next page shows you how the other pieces of our expenses are split up. You can see this is more spread out. Operations and maintenance is a significant cost at the school. That includes all of our utilities, any IT needs, building repairs, custodial supplies. Um, so that's a larger chunk of the pie here, almost even with instruction uh, supplies and materials. And then uh, pupil services, just as a reminder, includes transportation costs. So that's why that one is a little bit larger. It also includes expenses related to the health office, so any nursing supplies or materials as well. And uh, next we're going to talk about revolving funds. So we use almost another million dollars to offset the budget. Good chunk of that is being paid from school choice and special education revolving accounts. And then you can see the other revolving funds and grants there that we use. With that, our total budget which is on page 10, uh, including grants and revolving, is just over $3 million, and that is with the budget going forward at 2.9%.
Any questions so far? Just quick on the, yep. the wages are driving the overall increase and more saints and that, but how much are any of those one time type? I think I know what that was for, but I'm trying to refresh my memory. Or those we're gonna see those. Okay. So yeah, and wages uh will be more potentially have a larger impact on future budgets because we go into no negotiations next year for fiscal year 26. So we have no idea at this point what COLA will look like, um, but we will be looking at a new contract there. Um, the 20,000 that is, I talked about for um, longevity benefit in three years, that, that will fall off. So but, we'll have a two year overlap of that, the new negotiator. So, and, and you said the, the ESSER money is coming to an end, so. September, yeah. So we started this year at, what did I say, 5.6%. Yeah, I so, mean, the 30 is like 1. Point yeah, we're going to be right back up there at level services next year. So next year could be a more challenging budget year for Conway because there aren't a whole lot of other places to pull funds from. School choice is healthy and uh, special education revolving is healthy, but you can also see that we're paying you know, 300,000 of expenses from those accounts. So um, a special ed revolving what we take in for wing? Correct. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the other, the other question I have would be uh, the next slide or something, just the amount of the school choice percent of the total, not, not quite 50, but yeah, that's, that's, that's another dynamic if that changes. Yeah, it's, been, it's, been, it's pretty stable in general for the school, though. It is. We need to maintain. It. You know, yeah. we're, we're very appealing. We need to maintain. That, it. That's why we invest in our school right. so we can so maintain we can. it. Kristen does an excellent job of backfilling spaces because we always have sixth graders that are outgoing. So mm -hmm. your starting point is you got to at least refill those spaces and then add them. Big sixth grade class. Big sixth grade. Class. Big yeah. sixth grade class. And we have well, nothing. Uh, I have that. We have enough applications right currently to even, and Mark hasn't even hit, to fill those and then some. So the next several years that we're at, um, what's this year, eight? Next year's eight. I have next year's number. I don't have that full packet with me. In sixth grade. Yeah, so then we're looking at eight, 12, and nine. So there's going to be quite a few spaces to fill for sure. Next year? Um, you mean this spring into next year or next year? So you have 11 outgrowing sixth grade. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have to at least fill yeah. 11 spots to maintain the revenue. Yeah. And then over the next few years, there are also larger classes yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's a really good point because we rely on those funds. There, every IA in this building is paid from another funding source. Most of them are paid from school choice. A good chunk of them are also paid for the ones that work in the wings program. So if we did not have those revenue sources, the school would look very different. It's not all going to go away overnight if if we do start. Yeah. Doing that, but just, it's yeah, certainly definitely. something to be aware of, and it's the end it's right. happening I mean, at other one, schools. If I was to project ahead for next FY twenty six, I mean, being below three percent is going to be very difficult. Right. And it might be an adjustment year where we go to the town for more than a year. I mean, part of the perspective of really trying to push below 3% this year was all the, the flood damage and whatnot, not knowing what the funding was going to be from the state. And I feel like that came in where, where the town needed it to, right? I don't want to reinvent the budget wheel, but. We also have to hindsight. use the ESSER funds as well. So we may yep. as well use them while we have it. Right. Right. I mean, we could, if you focus numbers too low, you know, if we do have this conversation, we could try to bank more for next year. And so use, instead of using, or, uh, it, it was called a choice fund to use, you could move however those three revolving accounts, not revolving accounts, but those three uh, additional revenue sources around, but you could move it up to 3%. And then, you know, so what's a half a percent though? It's, you know, we'll say I think it's better to do what we do and then, but predict that it's not gonna, remain i think it's you know um hopefully we'll have someone from the finance committee and select board at our march march meeting, meeting. and so i think we can kind of talk about they usually come 
I wanted to talk about the state revenue, like you brought up, Elaine. The governor's budget is out. Mm -hmm. um, chapter 70 for Conway is going to be at the minimum per pupil increase because enrollment is steady, as you mm -hmm. said. Even our resident enrollment is steady. We're not seeing a significant increase. So mm -hmm. the town will only receive, as it stands right now, $30 per pupil. The House and the Senate may increase that to $60. But you're talking about... Four thousand dollars in that oh it's it's so minimal um we don't receive soa money because we're in that hold harmless state which means that our enrollment is stagnant or not growing mm -hmm. um the other thing that we're watching really closely is rural aid um one the governor changed the language in what she's proposing for the rural aid bill so that it would be more competitive versus right now it's based on um, a formula on student density in your town. Uh, we think that the House and the Senate will stay with the formula because she tried to do the same last year as well, and they kept it with the same formula. So we think we'll be okay there. It is funded levelly right the, now. And when you use the term competitive, what do they, they mean by the language kind of refers to like, what are you going to do to save money by using this money? by regionalizing and consolidating that kind of stuff. Because that is how Eastern Mass looks at Western Mass. That we, you know, we should all be one district. We can bus kids an hour and a half to school. They don't really understand that, um, how it can work. So they're trying to, you know, and If the language is changed, if the House and the Senate went along with it, it'll be much like SOA funding, where the districts that are already getting the most chapter 70 and the most SOA money are getting more rural aid than small districts like us. Mm -hmm. So it sort of defeats the purpose of what right. these funds were supposed to be for. Right. So, so, right. so politically where things are, are sitting now and um, <clears throat> we've been going through a lot of different things where uh, people, um, Chile and I went to a, a meeting last Friday with the um, Taxpayers Association, which is a nonpartisan group that kind of looks at the um, governor's budget and kind of does a lot of auditing of what's going on in the state. And they said that this is an interesting year because the revenue keeps on coming in lower and lower each month. Why is that? People are not either making money or paying taxes. Right, that's what I was like. Is it a collection issue? Well, it's sometimes it's a collection issue, but it's more, it, it's the big corporations where it moves that in. So if their revenues are down, or if they move to corporate headquarters, or if they do those kind of things, that number is going to come down. Except we have marijuana and we have the lottery that's supposed to and the a lot tax. of go, and the millionaires tax. So the millionaire tax is funding the universal free lunch or free so meals. So we got new money, and they said, "Oh, here's a new way we can spend it." And, you know. That's if you know, yes, all students should be, but I, I'm kind of there are people that can afford to pay for the students that mm -hmm. So I, I'm kind of on the, on the, on the mm -hmm. you can be talking either way on that one. But so I'll, I'll talk about each one of those. Right, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk about each one of those. So one, they said that one thing that's different is that in other years, the uh, governor's budget is usually the most conservative. Um, and in this case, um, the House and Senate might actually become more conservative than that. So that means you may see reductions in what the governor comes out. Because usually you can go for the governor, you know, never for everything. So we don't know where they would kind of pull it from, you know, they're, you know, <clears throat> and it's going to be politics. But we're connected to everything else. So the town gets hit by a ton of other different reductions in, you know, you know, Chapter 90, which is your roads or those kind of things. If they get less than they have to backlog from their other accounts. So everybody gets hurt, almost everybody. If there's major reductions. Um, so there's one thing they said, keep an eye on that. And then also keeping an eye on you know, rural aid, if that gets hit, that is the difference maker. So Student Opportunity Act money is really, it's something like 166 communities are getting no additional money. So they are trying to figure out, they're talking about it. They understand this, but they can't be, they can't keep it in this, in this mode forever because the towns are having the taxpayers having to pick up the difference okay. right so if we what's the increase of our this budget right now number wise what's that what's it eight thousand right now oh, right. 128. 
Right. Was the total number increased? 128. Okay, so it's 128,000, and we're going to get 8,000. So 120 is going on. It's going on to the tax credit. Mm -hmm. So everybody's in that kind of position. You can't keep doing that. So with rural aid, technically, if you can either fully fund or continue to move that needle up, it will make up a difference where you can continue to be healthfully grow. But the problem is, as we know, we can't guarantee what we're getting next year. So it's very difficult. If they cut rural aid next year, um, Another. we'll be okay with this budget, but we're going to be immediately in a problem with the next budget. So we're going to have to pay in the year, year, year in the rear, which we used to do with school choice way back when we first got it kind of as well. Um, is there any talk about increasing what they pay for school choice? That's such a random number. It's yeah, and, and it's and been that that number for a long time. The, but costs have gone up, right. so you'd think that number would go up. They don't want school choice. They don't care about school choice because the only place they really are doing school choice is Franklin County and the Cape. You know, a little bit of Hampshire County as well. You know, so those are the big school choice guys, yeah. and there's no political clout to move that number. Um, Eastern Masters is not, there may be some exchanging schools, but it's not like we have here. They really need to fix the Chapter 70 formula, which they're trying to do, and the SOA was supposed to address part of it. The challenge with it is there's a component that's also based on inflation. So last year, some large districts that get a significant amount of money received huge increases because inflation was at 4.5%, which they cap in the formula. This year, inflation is down, and the rate is like 1.5%. So, like big cities are even seeing hundreds of thousands of dollars lost in their Chapter mm -hmm. 70 funding. You think so really inflation being work. down would be a good thing? Uh, and then the millionaires tax, they talked about it. What's interesting is that it was interesting is their position as a, as a group is that they don't, didn't agree with the millionaires tax. And they kind of go into as to why is because it is, um, it's written in, it was written into the Constitution. So you can't just go and adjust it later on it's like you're stuck with that that problem where other taxes can be easily done to the legislature change and how you're you know using them and that kind of stuff this one's really tough that which was interesting perspective as he's explaining he goes it's not the idea alone it was how they instituted it which was very poorly done he said so again they started using they used the money for free free loose lunch or free lunches for all um he said the other thing is that they have no there is no um agreeing yet how they're going to spend that money and they're trying because whether or not people are leaving the state or not he kind of said there's talk you know people are constantly wondering if that's an issue they, they, i think he did indicate there is some loss but he said um you know where are they going to start spending that money in the future so he said the next problem is it's roads and schools in the roads is going to start seeing a bigger and bigger portion of that and that apparently more really just put together an investigative group to look into everybody's buying um, electric automobiles, that's great, but guess how do we fund our roads? Gas tax. So where are you going to make up the difference in the gas tax? You're going to have an either electric tax or yearly. Somehow the state's got to get that money from you to driving your car onto roads. So, you know, there's different talk about whether they're going to put trackers in your car or, you know, you know, that kind of thing. But they have to, to figure out how much you use your road and tax you on that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, but you know, I mean, so there's that kind of point. So it's just, it's, it's, it's very interesting, these different problems, but the millionaire's tax is not going to bail out the schools moving forward. It's basically what they said. Don't account what about them. marijuana? I didn't talk about they didn't marijuana, talk about marijuana. Or lottery. Where does that money go? About, 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 about the, lottery. About the new um, sports online lottery. Online yeah. Yeah. And sports betting. Yeah. Sports betting is insane. Like every. You know, you watch the Celtics and you're like, oh, you know, over under, like, what about this? Is so and so going to have this many? No, no, we're in the Celtics jersey. You are. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I find it super annoying. I, I, you know, I, people have gambling problems. They shouldn't be prodded every minute to, like, take a risk on this and just do it on your phone. I think it's very problematic. Instead, you can join school committee and take a risk on where the budget's going to go. <laughs> For that <laughs> risk. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Slight follow-up question. So, Kristen, how, what makes it easy to fill the backfill those spots for school choice for this school for you? A great deal is um, a couple of things. Parent telling other parents. So, we have three cases where one parent lives on the street of 
of a couple of the parents out of town. And so that's one way. And another way is um, that often, sometimes when you get school choice, families might be looking at three different schools. And so, I mean, I really see it as we have to sell our school. Um, and when they come for their visit, they have to have a really good visit, you know. So what would um, you sell the school? What you say? What, what's helping you sell the school? It's not falling down around. I think the school, I think, I yeah. really believe it's the school itself. You know, if you walk down the hall and you're having a visit, you just see happy children and staff being overly friendly. And talk about, we also talk about all the things that we offer here. I mean, band and strings is a huge, you know, parent, parents really perk up for that. Also things, I mean, it may sound silly, but like, the running club, the chess club, um, the, the steam club. Parents are really interested in those before and after school activities that we offer. Um, and then, uh, you know, the staffing is a, is a big thing too. Staff ratio. Right, definitely. Like class size. Mm -hmm. Class size, some well, of our class sizes are, but the, yeah, the staff ratio, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, We're gonna be starting the acting club. I love it. So, Cool. I sometimes I'll have uh, you know little such and such wants to meet with me and set up a meeting with them. Some of us would really like to start an acting club. <laughs> I love that. Okay, we'll start an acting club. <laughs> That's adorable. Thank you. All right. So uh, bringing us back here, next page of the presentation just shows you the historical budget info where we've been over the last five years and what the recommendation is. Compared to other towns people should be carrying around on their shoulders. You know, the fact that you only had one blip that's even near poor where the towns mm -hmm. have had to do major adjustments. Yeah, um, how we go from zero increase to 3.79, that was a blip. Because we so zero. zero was the COVID year where we froze budgets and yeah. we went and we went not level service, level funding. Yeah. So we saved from fiscal year 20 to be able to support it was 20 percent increase on everything and whatever number. So we had a, a bit larger of a jump than 22. We may have added a few, like that's when I think we increased the summer programming money yeah. more. Yeah. Um, yes, and we had, remember we had you know, probably 50% work, staff working remotely. Yeah. So we had to have staff to fill that. Yeah. 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 All right, so next steps. You know, Jared brought up a really good point. Uh, it is something for you all to consider. We do not have to use as much rural aid or, or um, ESSER money to offset and bring this down. We could save some of that in school choice for next year. Uh, and you could you know, bring this number up slightly. We could leave it here. We can bring it to public hearing, see what the town has to say. Um, we do need direction at this point. I think you're looking for a vote on what percentage. We need, a, we need a number hearing. to move forward because we got to know what we're sending out to the towns. Yeah, I think it's a, I don't think we should reinvent the wheel. You know, um, 2.69, but if, if the opportunity presents itself and we're looking to move something or conversation leads that way, giving the heads up that we're looking at a larger increase next year. Be in so the issue will be is you can't move. raise it after public hearing without okay. having another public hearing. Yeah. And so in order to do a public hearing, you got to post on the paper two weeks prior to the meeting and so on and so forth. So, um, gotcha. you yeah. know, there's other... I'm trying to how else you can move that about. Well, I mean, we could look at what it looks like to, you know, even if we add another 10,000, I guess that's at 3.15. I mean, 10,000. No, no, no. It's not going to change the town on anything. Actually. No. It's just like if it next year, if it's five versus 4.2. Does that help us next year? Right. It would give you the 10,000 to help bring next year's budget down. Despite that bell next year. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And if we're communicating that with the town, let them save instead of us saving from ourselves. Right. It, not saying let them yeah. save like their responsibility, well, we but we should be right. we should be transparent if we're saving the taxpayer money right. because of the concern we have. Well, we can easily say yes, sir, funds are working. We know, have some one time funds one that are reducing thing, risk. Right. No, right. Originally, when we were originally looking at this budget way back in beginning November, we were we had some assumption that we were not assumption, but we were hoping that the rural aid money would grow. 
Mm-hmm. Not not double like it did this year, but even if it went from fifteen to eighteen, you know, each you know getting a few more eighteen million. I'm talking about, um, you know, that would have, that would help you increase slightly. Mm-hmm. That could give you the ten thousand dollars you need to change that thing. So, but now that I'm, I, it's going to either stay or it's going to be reduced. Mm-hmm. So, and at the thirty thousand SR offset, there's still between ten and fifteen left that we haven't earmarked to spend on anything. So we could put that into school place and save that for the future. Yeah. Good. So are we good with this number? Denise. Denise, we good with this number? Yeah. Do you need a vote on that number? You kind of technically just did it, but yeah, I don't okay. think you should vote that number. Okay. You probably should say all in favor of the... Uh, all in favor of the uh, 2.69. Aye. Okay. All right. There you go. Uh, sure. Thank you for the nice show of report. And, I've been the I and, you know, please, if people talk to you about it, try to answer their questions, you know, as much as possible, because sometimes we hear people. You know, and I, I mean, I heard some feedback last year from our select board member, and I was just like, how did you respond to that? Because you should respond to that with, you know, we purposely did this because we're investing in our school because, you know, we, you know, we, that's, it's the gem of the town and we need to keep it, you know, school choice. Parent. Once, once parents start thinking you're not funding your school, they're looking elsewhere. You know, then we're losing kids out of district, right, right. you know. And then, and right. Then so you levels, level. Right. You really have to take any feedback you hear, positive and negative, and respond to it. I personally think that's our job as school committee members. So nice. All right. New business. Policies. So your first read of the new budget policies coming from your policy subcommittee. Um, they uh, are busy, aren't they? We are busy, busy. But the good news is this gets us through the book. We have to go back and do one section, but this gets us through. Um, we're getting pretty close. Wow. It's exciting stuff. Now, we'll get Denise because Denise is your rep on that. Oh, good job. Um, so I'm just going to quickly go through what they are because we kind of do the work today on the first read, and then so you don't do as much work on the second. Um, so KCD is gifts public gifts to school. There's updated language around the fiscal review by school committee. KHA is public solicitation in schools. There's cleaner language. And we didn't update this originally from the last time NASC updated. So our policy was, was very much out of date. It wasn't broken, but it was out of date. LBC, um, relations with non-public schools. There's new language there. Um, and that does kind of get us up to what the laws are in which um, the public school is supposed to work with the private schools. It doesn't really have much common because there's no private school. EHAA, um, district security related to technology. This is a new policy. And so these next few policies regarding technology, we have technology um, plans in our handbook, and we also have a technology acceptable use policy and that kind of stuff. So this is kind of like your statement, our policy saying that you have to have those things underneath it. So it's not that like we don't have these things in place, but um, they recommend that you have this so that you're protecting as the overseers of all things. So, um, so the first one is EHAA is security related to technology, provides a foundation for administrative procedures and practice to ensure information which is stored in excess on digital technology is appropriately protected. EHB is another new one. It's data and records retention. Same idea. Um, regarding record retention of records, including electronic communications by public officials. GBEE, another new policy, um, is personal use of technology, um, outlines responsibility of district personnel and their use of technology. Um, JCI, JICJ, student use of technology in school, you get it, um, outlining the vision and responsibility of the students' use of technology. Um, KCD, is the community use of digital resources. This policy recognizes that digital resources, most notably public Wi-Fi, are now a common public resource of the school and outlining appropriate considerations there. KDCB is the district website and social media. Um, and this one is to recognize that the school schools have both websites and social media pages and the best practices, including public comments on such sites. 
And then EFC is Universal Free School Meals. Um, this is uh, an update of that because Universal Free Meals have become free since that um, since that policy was redone. And then EFP is a school nutrition program charge policy. Same idea is that they change the, the funding and the law, so that'll get everything up to speed there. And then there's the reduction of one, which is community involvement in schools. And they are recommending that you remove that because there's plenty of opportunities within many of the policies for um, community involvement in decision making in schools. Okay. So all of these are upon the recommendation of the policy committee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, reports. I do not have a report. Uh, Denise, I don't know if you have a collaborative report or if you guys have met since last time. We did have a meeting. Um, I did. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I did send um, the summary to you, but I don't really have much other than we met and um, yeah, not much. Yeah. Yep. I did scan that. I didn't read it. There's always a lot going on there. Yeah. Um, and superintendent's report? No report. Okay. No executive session. All right. Can I have a motion to adjourn unless we have any other business? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. Second. All right. All in favor, thank you for your attendance. Appreciate it.